Hello everyone, we're the AI Learning Team. Today, we're excited to share our amazing work with you to improve the online learning experience of RID Labs. To start, we'd like to introduce the team that put this project together. The team includes Daniela Bojado, Samuel Davila, Young Lang Shur, and myself, Christopher Ortiz. Let's take a look at our agenda. First, we'll cover what RID is. Then we'll provide an executive summary, share the goal and purpose of this project, and walk you through each phase of our project pipeline. Finally, we'll wrap things up with our conclusion and future investigations. Let's begin with a brief overview of who RID is. RID is a leading provider of AI educational platforms. They provide AI-based web and mobile products that cover a wide variety of subjects, including SAT prep, language competency, and professional development. Our project focuses specifically on RID's English competency app. It prepares Korean students for the TOEIC, also known as the Test of English, for international communication. The picture of the phone on the left depicts the app. Apps such as these provide students personalized remote education. This has become increasingly important with the current pandemic, where a vast amount of learning is now done online. Let's now move into our executive summary. Our goal is to increase the effectiveness of RID's online AI tutoring platform. To summarize our project, we found that there are certain sections that students generally perform worse on. Photos and explanations boost student performance, while the impact of lectures plateaus over time. We also created a classification machine learning model that can effectively predict whether a student will answer a question correctly. Our recommendations are as follows. RID could offer two new types of study material. The first, a combination of lectures and questions relating to sections that students have trouble with. The second is a series of lectures that develop a student's ability to interpret English by using the context of a question when photos are not available. RID could also develop a new feature that gives students the option to view alternate questions with similar explanations for the questions they miss. Doing so would increase students' exposure to explanations, which have been shown to improve student performance. RID could also update their lectures so they have an impact on student performance throughout the course of their studies. To aid them in these endeavors, RID could use our model to predict how students will perform and tailor their content accordingly. If these recommendations are followed, we expect that RID's program will be more effective at preparing students for the TOEIC. And now, Daniela will give an in-depth view of our goals. Thank you, Chris. To reiterate, our goal as a data science team is to increase RID's effectiveness in providing personalized online education. We did this by exploring the data to draw insights about what affects student performance. We define a student's performance as the percentage of questions they answer correctly. We also created a model that predicts when a student will answer a question correctly. The purpose of our project is to increase the quality of the remote education RID students receive. This is important because an increasing number of students are transitioning to online education in response to COVID-19. Now let's look at an overview of our project pipeline. We began by planning out our project in Trillo, a project management tool. Next, we acquired our data from the website Kaggle. Then we prepared and cleaned the data using the Python libraries Pandas and NumPy. This set us up for exploration. We explored the data using Matplotlib, Seaborn, and SciPy to find the drivers of student performance. Then we use the Scikit-Learn library to build a model that predicts what questions a student will answer correctly. Finally, we summarize our findings and came up with a set of recommendations for RID to improve their product with. Below is a complete list of the tools that we use throughout our project. Now, let's take a closer look at how we acquired and prepared the data. Our data was stored in EdNet, the world's largest open database for AI education. We downloaded the data from Kaggle. The dataset contained around 390,000 students' performance data and was composed of over 100 million rows. To facilitate exploration, we reduced it to 100,000 students with 21 million rows. Now, let's look at a breakdown of the data structure for questions. There are two segments, listening and reading. Within each segment, there are multiple sections. The listening segment is composed of sections involving photographs, question responses, conversations, and narration. The reading section is composed of sections involving incomplete sentences, text completion, and passages. The screenshot to the right gives us an example of what an incomplete sentence question might look like. Let's keep the overall data structure in mind as we go forward into exploration. Next up, Samuel will talk about some of the key findings that we uncovered while exploring the data. Thanks, Daniela. 
we explored the data to identify whether different variables hindered, improved, or had no significant impact on student performance. Identifying these variables is essential to not only improving our model's predictive capabilities, but also informing us about what changes RID can make to improve their system. Let's begin by exploring how students perform across each of the different sections of the learning material. Student performance was weakest on questions that involved incomplete sentences or narrations, as indicated by the two bars at the top of the graph. Conversely, students performed the strongest on questions that contained photographs, as indicated by the bar at the bottom of the graph. In light of these findings, we suggest that RID offer study material for their most challenging content along with material that develops their students' ability to understand English based on contextual clues. This may help them in cases where photos aren't available. Next, let's look at how students' performance varies between questions with and without explanations. An explanation tells a student why they got an answer incorrect. The bars on the left half of the graph represent student performance in the reading segment, while the bars on the right represent their performance in the listening segment. The orange bars represent questions that did not have an explanation, while the green bars represent questions that did have an explanation. The graph shows that students perform better when given an explanation, regardless of the subject. We recommend that RID add a new feature that works as follows. When a student gets a question wrong, in addition to an initial explanation, the app also offers the student the opportunity to view a different question with a similar explanation. This would provide students with more exposure to explanations which we know to have a positive impact on their performance. Finally, let's examine how lectures impact student performance. To illustrate this, we took a random sample of 2,000 students and picked the three who had viewed the most lectures among them. The colored dots in the graph depict their performances over time. The x-axis represents how many lectures a student viewed while the y-axis represents their performance after viewing that many lectures. The graph shows that even though there was an initial performance increase for the two students represented by the blue and orange dots, as the number of lectures continued to increase, the performance of all the students plateaued and there was no significant change thereafter. We saw similar results across the average performance of the 2,000 random users we originally sampled. Their performance is represented by the red line in this version of the graph. In light of this, RID could revise the content of their lectures to make them more impactful for the full duration of a student's studies. Next up, Yong Liang is going to talk about our predictive model. Thank you, Samuel. Our best model is a light gradient boosting machine, also known as LGBM. The visual you see here depicts the top five inputs that impact our model's predictions. The graph shows a number of times the feature has been used in the model. Since individual performance and question difficulty are the most important inputs, we only use these two in our model. Now that we know what went into our model, let's review how we gauge its performance. To begin, we set a benchmark by creating baseline model. The baseline makes random predictions as to whether or not a student will answer a question correctly. The x-axis in the graph represents a false positive rate. This is the percentage of questions that were predicted to be correct but students got wrong. The y-axis represents a true positive rate. This is the percentage of questions that were predicted to be correct and students got right. The red area on the graph, also known as the AUC or the area under the curve, represents how often the baseline made a correct prediction. In this case, approximately 50% of the time. The performance of our best model, LGBM, is represented by the blue area in the graph. It surpassed the baseline by 47%, which is represented by the light blue area above the red dot line. Now that we've explained how we gauged our model's performance, Let's examine a simplified representation of how our model works. The model begins by asking a question such as, was a question difficult? If the response is no, the model predicts the students answered the question correctly. If the response is yes, the model then asks another question. 
Does a student have at least a B average? If the answer is yes, the model predicts the student's answer is correct. Otherwise, it predicts the student's answer is incorrect. After a tree is complete, the model transfers what it learned to a new tree. This cycle repeats many times. Each tree attempts to reduce the errors of its predecessor. The end result is a tree that, in combination with all previous trees, improves the predictive capability of the model. Now that we've walked through our process from planning all the way to our final model, Daniela will review our conclusion. Thank you, Yang Lang. Our overall results were that students performed worse on questions that involved incomplete sentences or narration, while performing better on questions that include photos or explanations. We also found that the impact of lectures tends to plateau over time. Lastly, we created a model that predicts when a student will answer a question correctly. Our best model was created using the LGBM algorithm and produced an AUC score of 0.74, which outperformed our baseline by 47%. Our recommendations are for RID to offer more study material for the difficult sections of their program, namely incomplete sentences and narrations. They should also provide more content that strengthens their students' ability to understand English based on context clues, as this may help them answer questions when photos are not available. We also recommend that they develop a new feature that gives students the options to view alternate questions with similar explanations for the questions that they missed. Doing so could increase a student's exposure to the explanations which have been shown to improve a student's performance. RID could also revise the content of their lectures so that they have a stronger impact on students' performance over the course of their studies. Lastly, RID could use our model to predict student performance and to tailor their learning material for each student's needs. If these recommendations are followed, we expect that RID's program will be more effective at preparing students for the TOEIC. With regards to our future investigations, we'd like to adapt our model to RID's other educational programs, update it to predict student performance more effectively, and to create new models using different algorithms such as XGBoost. We'd like to thank RID Labs, Kaggle, and CodeUp for their help in our project. If you'd like to know more information or to contact us, follow us on our GitHub pages or our project website, dartoncapstone.com. Thank you.